Greetings developers and welcome to Serverless Migration Station where we show you one serverless compute modernization technique. I'm Wesley Chandra Google, joined by Martin and our friend Porter here to take you from point A to point B. Today's migration represents a product crossover, showing you how to containerize your App Engine apps to run on Cloud Run, our serverless container hosting service. Wow, uh, that sounds pretty complicated. Containerizing your app? I'm just a simple web developer. Uh, how much do I have to learn about containers? Great question, Martin. Developers out there already familiar with Docker don't have much to learn since they've already been creating and deploying containers. Using Docker to create a container for Cloud Run is pretty much the same as anywhere else. On the other hand, if you're completely new to containers, don't worry, we'll take care of you too. In this Module 4 video, we'll focus on Docker, but in Module 5, we'll show you how to containerize your apps without having to know anything about Docker or containers. That's great to know that Google Cloud is for Docker veterans and container newbies. Uh, so for folks like me who are new, uh, what's the elevator pitch for containers anyway? Well, glad you asked, Martin. With the seed planted years ago, containers came to the forefront when virtualization became a thing around the beginning of the millennium and were accelerated specifically for application packaging about a decade later by Docker. Of course, programming's been around for longer than that, and some of us have been writing code for ages without containers. While optional, containerizing gives developers the most freedom and flexibility in bundling their app. They're easily reproducible, and you can use or reuse them anywhere you want, making them extremely portable, too. Come on, those are just marketing buzzwords, Wes. What do they mean for developers like us? Well, you asked for the elevator pitch. This is going to take a little longer than one elevator right now. Well, containers give you the flexibility to bundle whatever your apps need, freeing you from traditional serverless restrictions like you have to use this language or you can't bundle that library because it's in C++. Furthermore, a container is reproducible. You configure how the container is built, and if you use the same instructions, you'll create an identical container. This is valuable not just for testing, but also for verifying your app works with which versions of your dependencies. No more deploying apps and hoping the production libraries are compatible. OK, so my users are based all over the world. So I want to deploy the same service everywhere. Uh, also, if I had a bad build, I want to roll back to the previous working version. Uh, so the same container image can be deployed anywhere. And if there's a problem, I can roll back to a previous container image. Oh, for sure. I mean, I know we're talking serverless here, but realize containers are ultra portable as that same container image can be deployed to you, your compute engine VMs, Kubernetes, in the cloud, your VMs on-prem, hybrid, or even multi-cloud. Think of containers like a shopping bag to bundle your code and its dependencies. Imagine carrying everything you bought at the market separately to your car or on the subway. <laughs> that shopping bag analogy makes a lot of sense to me. I'm sold on containers. Uh, but do I have to containerize my App Engine apps? Uh, I'm kind of used to App Engine style of development where I improve my code, You know, I deploy to staging, and then eventually to production. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I've been writing apps for years without containers. So if you're comfortable there, that's fine. But realize that industry has moved towards containers in a big way. So they're there for you when you're ready. I think you'll like our next video, though, because we'll show you how to containerize apps without knowing much about containers. So stay tuned for that. For now, Google has expressed long-term support for App Engine. But much of our effort is going to Cloud Run because containers are a de facto standard now. Well, I'm ready now. Uh, but before that, I do have some Python 2 legacy apps. Uh, I know it's been deprecated by the community and all that, but so I'm concerned. Uh, do you have any options for me? Yeah, you're not alone, Martin. Many Python 2 developers share those concerns. However, that long-term support page links to another page where Google has committed to supporting the App Engine 2.7 runtime, letting you move when ready. And did you already forget that Cloud Run supports any language, any library, any binary? Containerizing is one way to keep your Python 2 app alive forever. Well, if you put it that way, Wes, I'm going to containerize two App Engine apps, the Python 2 Cloud NDB app from Module 2 and the Python 3 Cloud Data Store app from Module 3. Sure, Martin. Porter has lots of energy today, so we'll do both, which is why there are Python 2 and 3 folders for Module 4 when we're done. Check out the Module 2 or 3 videos and repo folders to re-familiarize yourselves with each. The Python 2 Cloud NDB app is in the Module 2A folder, while the Python 3 Cloud Data Store app is in the Module 3B folder. Let's pause for a moment for you to catch up and grab your starting code base. Got it? 
Great, now let's go containerize them. As with most migrations, it's always a good idea to check that you're starting from a working app, whether the Module 2 Cloud NDB Python 2 app or the Module 3 Cloud Data Store Python 3 app, please redeploy yours or ours as suggested moments ago with gcloud app deploy and verify it works where you get the same output as from previous modules. Changing products from App Engine to Cloud Run requires configuration changes, so we suggest you make a full copy of your working app folder. Now it's safe to make the necessary changes containerizing that app. First, delete the app.yaml file as it's not used in Cloud Run. If migrating the Python 2 Cloud NDB app, also delete App Engine config.py and the lib folder. More App Engine artifacts unused in Cloud Run. Next, let's tackle requirements.txt. App Engine and Cloud Functions are source based and start your app with a production ready server. Since Cloud Run is a bit more DIY, you need to roll your own. Python App Engine uses the GUnicorn production ready server if you don't specify your own, so let's use that one for Cloud Run by adding it to requirements.txt. I like to put my packages in lowest to highest level order, which is why I listed it first. For the Python 2 app, you'll have GUnicorn, Flask, and CloudNDB, whereas for the Python 3 app, it'll be GUnicorn, Flask, and Cloud Data Store. Version numbers are a good practice, however, they change a lot and differ between Python 2 and 3, so that's why we're not showing any here. They're in the repo files, though. When using Docker, the main config file you need is a Docker file, so create that with the content you see on screen, or download it from the repo. If you're new to Docker files, you need to start with a base container, in this case, a minimal Python 2 or 3 image. From here, create and cd into your working directory, arbitrarily called app, with the workdir command. Now copy all the source code into app and run pip install so your application can use those packages listed in requirements.txt. Finally, entry point tells the system to start gunicorn to serve your app. Check the Docker file best practices page for more info. Another good practice is to add a Docker ignore file. While it is optional, it helps keep unnecessary files from being added to your container. It's less important for our sample apps since they're so small but it can have a positive impact on your apps, controlling container size, and preventing accidental exposure of secrets like API keys or OAuth credentials. This isn't Python related, so you can use the same Docker ignore for both Python 2 and 3 apps. Since we're migrating identical apps to Cloud Run, there are no other changes other than configuration updates. That means we can just deploy it now. We're done! <laughs> Instead of gcloud app deploy for App Engine, the command now is gcloud run deploy service name dash dash source dot to deploy the app from the source code in the current directory. Instead of deploying an app with Cloud Run, you deploy a service. So you have to come up with a service name, hopefully more exciting than App Engine's default. Cloud Run also has more options. So you're gonna be asked what region to deploy to and whether you're allowing open internet traffic. Lastly, Cloud Run is available in other form factors, but the one closest to App Engine is fully managed. If you don't want to get asked all of these every single time, provide them on the command line as options like this one here that I'm using for our app, calling the service Visit Me. And like your App Engine app, your service should be available in globally in under a minute at a unique URL you can point to with a custom domain. Hit it with your browser and confirm you now have a running Cloud Run app. Cool. So what do you think, Martin? Wow, Wes, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. I was a bit apprehensive about the learning these containers, but it doesn't look that bad. Uh, but watching you do it is too easy. Where can I try these migrations myself? Of course, Martin. All modules have a corresponding code lab linked in the repo and below, where we walk you through this migration step by step. If things go don't go well migrating the Python 2 Cloud NDB app, Grab it again from the Module 2A start folder. The same is true with the Python 3 Cloud Data Store app. Reset to its Module 3B folder if you need to. You can compare your solution with ours in the Module 4A or 4B finished folders. Another link we're leaving for you is to the gcloud run deploy docs in case you're curious how it works and what else you can do with it. Great. I'm looking forward to doing those by hand. But I am still concerned about that Docker file. Our sample app is quite simple, so there wasn't any trouble, but you know, out in the real world. Yeah, I know. You have many more dependencies, and it's easier to create suboptimal or overly complex Docker files. These can lead to slowing down the build, deployment, and execution of your containerized app. 
That's why you should check out Module 5, where you don't have to worry about Docker files anymore. We'll add a link to the video once it's ready, but for now, you can already do its code lab. Oh, I look forward to seeing that. Uh, by the way, my DevOps coworkers told me they preferred if my app can be integrated in our CSCD pipeline. Uh, can Cloud Run do that, Wes? Oh, yeah. On the CD side, one cool feature of Cloud Run is that you can deploy direct from a code push. This is configured in the Cloud Console if your code is in a repo system like GitHub or Bitbucket. When a commit takes place, it triggers Cloud Build to build and register your container, then deploys it to Cloud Run. If you slip in a service like GitHub Actions that builds and tests your code before sending it to Cloud Run, you'll have that CI CD environment you asked for. See the link to our community tutorial to learn more about how to do that. OK, great. Thanks, Wes. Aside from containerizing my App Engine apps for Cloud Run, uh, what are some other migrations I should consider? Well, aside from the next video on containerizing your app without Docker, if you're on Cloud NDB and have other code using the Cloud Data Store client library, consider consolidating to one client library. That's covered in Module 3. If you're excited about all those Firebase features in Cloud Firestore and willing to move your app to a new project, check out Modules 6 and 10. If your app uses App Engine task queues, migrate to Cloud Tasks, and that's covered in Modules 7, 8, and 9. Finally, if your App Engine app is pretty small or does only one thing, consider migrating to Cloud Functions. That'll be found in Module 11. But note, you have to port your code from Python 2 to 3 first, as Cloud Functions only supports Python 3. And thank all of you for staying with us on all of these migration journeys. Please join us for the Module 5 Migration Station, not only to learn more about containers, but it's all of the stuff that we didn't get a chance to cover today. This is Wesley Chen from Google Cloud. On behalf of Martin and Porter, we hope to see you at the next Migration Station or on another serverless expedition soon. Mm -hmm.